A Stuart Models number 9 horizontal steam engine part 2 taking a look at the mechanical aspect of this number 9 steam engine. I need to build the components into a steam plant that is in two separate pieces. The first part to go in the not required bin is this adapter for the exhaust. It is threaded 5 16 by 40 threads per inch which in itself is unusual because the ME range of threads have different thread pitches but usually for 5 16 of an inch diameter it's 32 threads per inch. I will have to remember to make an adapter to 40 threads per inch to 32 threads per inch. It's time now to test whether the water pump works because if this doesn't work I will need to mess about with it to make it work. It's an essential part of the steam plant. I'm using two pieces of model aircraft silicone rubber fuel tubing to verify that the pump actually does pump water. The first thing I noticed though was the pump wasn't self priming and this could be due to a number of factors. Maybe it's just the ball is very dry on the seat or maybe there's a problem. When I primed the pump by sucking the water through using my mouth then it started to work. In this next clip the engine is running. And it's pumping water, but unfortunately the outlet flange is leaking badly, so it's running all over the baseboard. And at this point, I would like to mention something about baseboards that look like this. Once upon a time, a customer asked me to build him a steam plant, and he supplied the baseboard, which was a light oak baseboard, very much like this. And where water contacted the board, it turned black. If you look under the cylinder, you can see a dark area on this board. Here I'm wiping away as much of the water as possible to stop the baseboard from turning black. I think it's time for an engine run. I'll stop talking during this bit. I'm not unduly worried about this leaking flange because it's going to be removed and I will be silver soldering a longer pipe into the flange and also another pipe into the water inlet and these two pipes will be connected to fittings on the baseboard. There will also be two more fittings on the baseboard, one for the steam inlet and one for the exhaust outlet. I would say that aesthetically the best view of this engine is the flywheel side with the water pump. And for that reason, the piping will go to the other side of the baseboard, effectively to the rear of the engine, which will be sat next to the boiler plant. That's the plan so far anyway. It's time now to take a close look at the boiler. I'm re-securing the loose boiler band at one end of it. And here you can see all the marks on the boiler from the boiler bands. One of the marks is because the band isn't in the right place, the others are just from the remains of Brasso or Duraglit or whatever metal polish was used. In exactly the same way as I showed in the previous episode, I'm using some WD-40, but this time on the boiler. You spray it on and wipe it off, and the white marks magically disappear, and they don't come back. A lot of the white marks are in the cracks between the boards. And for that reason I'm applying rather a lot of WD-40 so it runs into the cracks between the boards, which completely removes the metal polish residue. I thought it would be a good idea to call the customer on the phone and I spoke to him about the parts that he sent. I'll just pause this thread momentarily as I show that I'm using a toothbrush to thoroughly clean the gaps in the cladding. Back to the phone call, the customer explained that he bought this engine part finished. And as you can see, he made a very good job of finishing the engine. The boiler was bought, in his words, from somewhere down south, and it was new when he bought it. He has a boiler certificate for it, but I'm going to retest the boiler using my hydraulic rig. I'm not prepared to take any chances with the pressure vessel, and normally, although I don't always show it on the videos, every boiler that passes through my hands that is larger than a very small steam toy, 
gets a hydraulic test, but I cannot issue certificates. I'm sure that as this boiler is a commercially produced item, it will be fine, but I cannot take this for granted. Laying in a hospital bed with parts of a steam boiler sticking out of me is not something I want to do. The boiler back head was originally painted black, and the customer was telling me that he didn't like it, so he removed the paint, but he didn't remove all of it. I don't think this was intentional, but actually it looks good with bits of black paint on the back head. It makes it look very industrial revolution. So I'm going to leave that just as it is, because I like the way it looks. There are two bushes that are not used on the back of the boiler. The top one is for the pressure gauge, and the bottom one, fitted with a blanking plug, is where the check valve goes, which in turn is fitted to the water inlet supply from both the crankshaft driven water pump and the hand pump that is not yet fitted. It's part of the regulations and it's very important that you must have more than one water feed system into a steam boiler. It's not a massive issue with a gas fired boiler because if you run low on water you can turn the gas off but on a coal fired boiler it's essential to have a reliable water feed at all times. These twin gas burners should provide more than enough heat to generate the steam. And now the boiler cladding has been cleaned using WD-40, it's looking a whole lot better. Something has to be done about this. It's a chimney cap, it's made from brass, it's very thick, it's loose and it's very heavy. I intend to re-machine this piece of brass so it looks more like this. This is the chimney cap on my Stirling Single. A quick look at the taps on top of the boiler. The one on the right hand side really has no function. I think I'd like to replace it with a whistle valve and a whistle. The valve in the middle, yes this one, is the main steam outlet valve to the steam plant. It connects to a piece of pipe that goes into the chimney, loops down into the hot part of the flue, and then comes out of the other side where it connects to the engine. I think it's time to remove this very ugly, very heavy top cap. I've put it somewhere safe. I'll machine it later on in the job. I'm not starting this job for the moment because I have too many other jobs already in progress. Later on in this month, January 2024, both the seven and a quarter inch gauge Sweet William project will be completed and also the large steam plant project will also be completed. And then I can start this project in earnest. There are some things I need to do before I can start though. I'm going to buy two mahogany baseboards for the plant. One for the boiler side of things and one for the engine. And that's it for now. Stay safe, stay healthy. Thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Main Steam Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists, you can actually watch the videos back to back.